It happens. Or a French monarchy, as you want, because we do not know the difference between the two. Organizers, you see well. Pam pam. Well, uh, why not? Uh, yes, uh, we will start. We are starting. We did start. We have been starting. Yeah, long life. So we resume uh, governance. We would like to know more, huh? even me. I'm totally, as you see, I'm cheering, and uh, also I'm hosting you, but I will confess that I do not know well this, uh, this area, huh? local affairs. I'm, I'm enthusiastic about it, but you need to know well. I will know more in a minute. First, we will hear from Reinhardt, European Investment Bank, Reinhardt. Thank you very much for this invitation. It's a pleasure to come here. Also, I discovered that uh, one of my first jobs, uh, the impact has really shown uh, something uh, extraordinary with the city of Heidelberg, which really took up the challenge of uh, fighting against climate change. I mean, this was 92, so it's a pleasure to, to be here for, for this reason also. In addition, I think the discussion is very interesting um, because uh, uh, Combining the different levels, European, national, and local level, is really a challenge. Uh, for me, the, the one of the interesting thing by the Commission to set up the Covenant of Mayors was to have direct contacts with the, uh, local authorities, in particular uh, because this is normally not the responsibility of the, uh, the European Commission. I mean, this was not uh, touched this, to, to this morning. But uh, I think the member states will not be very eager to have the Commission meddling around at regional and local level because uh, the member states will tell you or tell us that is a subsidiarity principle which is their responsibility. It's not the Commission which has to, to engage in this. So I think there are some, some substantial challenges to, to, ray, or to, to overcome by you if you want to go into, into this direction and see also that uh, the Commission has direct uh, impact on local authorities. But the principle, I think, is interesting. The Commission set it up, and in, in parallel also they set up a, a facility which we are managing on, on, the, on behalf of the Commission, which, to which I will come back a little bit later, in order to give also more support to local authorities to prepare or to translate the sustainable energy and uh, climate action plans into investments. Because in the end, uh, if now, I'm working as a banker before I was more an engineer, but uh, coming into the bank changes also a little bit the way how you look at things. Uh, in the end, it's, it's assets which will change also the, the, the energy consumption and, the, and lead to energy reduction and also to climate change uh, mitigation. It's not the only way for sure, but it's one of the important ways to do it. So in the end, uh, at one moment, we have to talk about how can we uh, translate the, the targets also into investments and how will these investments take place in order that we reach the, the general objectives which were set with the Paris Agreement. So I just want to give you some short uh, information about the, about the bank. I don't know if you know it, it's, but it's a, a bank which was set up, I, I, I was set up in uh, 58, so we are independent from the Commission, we are an, an own institution. Uh, all member states are shareholders, so for the moment we have still 28. Let's see how this uh, will be sorted out with Great Britain. We are, have prepared also scenarios if Great Britain will drop out, but all of them are the shareholders. We are uh, investing basically in infrastructure uh, projects in Europe. 90% of our lending is within the European Union, but also 10% goes outside Europe. So we are. Uh, working quite strongly with the EU delegations all over uh, the world uh, in order to promote uh, a sustainable uh, development. So the, the last year was a little bit less uh, than uh, usual, also due to the, to the Brexit. Uh, we have handed out uh, some 56 billion euros of loan. The year before it was 75, around 75 billion. 
or 70 billion, 70 billion, sorry. But uh, this is quite substantial. We have also a, a subsidiary which is called the European Investment Fund, which also has handed out loans in volume of, of 10 billion euros. So you see that this is quite substantial what, is, uh, what the bank is doing each year in Europe and outside Europe. What are, the, what, are, what are the impacts which we are looking at? I mean, we want to support uh, jobs, uh, maintain jobs, increase the number of jobs. We are working quite, we are very much present also in the health sector, improve health services, hospitals, etc. water sector, for example. All these sectors are also uh, sectors where local authorities are, can be involved or are involved. Um, we have quite strong uh, presence in the transport sector, financing uh, um, tra uh, tramways, etc. Energy is also quite high on the agenda. You will see the volumes which we do for energy efficiency, but not only. And one, one subject which is also now coming much more into the forefront is uh, the digital uh, equipment, broadband, but also other investments which allow to manage better uh, resources and also infrastructures. Um, if we look at uh, energy transition in cities, I mean, this is a sector, uh, as you have heard, which I have been working in for, for some years now. I just listed some of the, the subjects which I think are interesting to look into for, for local authorities. Uh, I mean, what is cr crucial, and I will come back a little bit later on this, is really the energy demand reduction. So what the Commission now ca called energy efficiency first. It's, it's still, for me, it's an intention. Uh, we need to see how this really uh, are tr is translated into politics, and especially also at <coughs> member state level and also at local level. But I think this is the, the first thing to do to reduce energy consumption. So you have, for example, for local authorities, you have public-private buildings, you have the small and medium-sized enterprises. Then you have the energy supply with low carbon uh, uh, intensity. So we have seen this with Heidelberg. Heidelberg is a good example. Decentralized energy generation, co-generation, district heating, using more renewable energy sources, photovoltaics, etc., um, which is, I think, also an interesting sector where local authorities can play a role, not necessarily only investing, but also support investments. Then we have transport and mobility, improved uh, transport, public transport, car sharing, uh, favoring soft uh, modes of transportation, electrification, also uh, local infrastructure, street lighting is very often uh, the responsibility of local authorities, district heating and cooling. We have now the concept of smart cities, smart grids, so how does this, uh, how is this developed, how can this also lead at the same time to better services for, for the local, uh, for the citizens, but at the same time also reduce energy consumption. Then we have uh, what we have heard also, the urban development, which is quite crucial. I mean, we develop new areas of, uh, of housing, of uh, living, of uh, production activities, etc. How will they be designed in order to be in line with the overall objectives uh, in, in 2050 to be uh, uh, carbon neutral? So I think there is a lot of activities, a lot of sectors where local authorities can, can uh, get involved. And also the, the, the bank is quite present in these sectors. So what, what, what do we do in general? I mean, it's a little bit general uh, more. We, we have three, three, I think, three activities. One is the, this, the main one, it's lending, so we hand out loans. Long-term debt, I think this is important. Also, having in mind energy efficiency, very often you need long-term debts in order to make this uh, attractive. We have other types of financing, subordinated loans, project financing, equity type, Guarantees. I mean, smart, smart financing for smart, smart buildings, for example, is, is, is a guarantee system. We have specific tools, uh, as I said, SFSB. FC, the European Fund for Strategic Investments, is, uh, we now have a target of 500 billion euros to, to finance this until 2020. We are blending also, so we are lining up our loans together with, uh, with structural funds, so in order that 100% or 90%, for example, of the, of the investments can be financed. We can also go into higher risk uh, projects with innovation, and also we do a lot of advising, we support advising, so I will uh, present you a little bit more in detail the Elena uh, uh, facility, but we are also running JustBurst, we have also European Investment Advisory Hub. Because we see in basically that uh, 
investments are important, but uh, the potential investors or the promoters or supporters of this need more know-how, need to be supported in order to present investments, which we call in our, our jargon bankable, in order that banks can get involved, not only us, but also other ones, because in the end somebody has to finance this. Very often it's not with, with the cash or equity, but it's with the, with the loans, which, which, needs to do, which needs to be there in order to implement investments. So I want to give you some flavor a little bit of what, what in concrete terms, what we do. I mean, we have program loans for cities, for larger cities, for smaller also, for especially also in Eastern and Central Europe. So we have uh, f uh, program loans, as we call it, where the city then shows us different uh, sectors where they want to do investments, where we can follow them and help them to do this. For example, energy efficiency in, in public building, uh, refurbishment upgrade of public services like swimming pools, hospitals. We are also quite present in the urban transport. I said already this dedicated bus lanes, upgrade of public transport, interconnection between different transport modes, so m m m hubs, for example, digitalization, uh, real-time passenger information, um, where, we, where we can finance investments, uh, energy supply infrastructure, district heating and cooling, heat generation. What is interesting, I think what, we, what came a little bit out of the, the discussion which we had this, uh, in this session before is we need to, to associate different uh, uh, stakeholders in, in the process of, uh, of uh, uh, developing activities at local and regional level in order to, to reach the targets. This cannot be only done by the national government, even if they have a very crucial role to play, or by, by regional and local entities. We need to channel more investments into this sector. So the, 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 the budgets of local, of local and also national entities are limited. If you look at what we need to do in order to reach the, the, the target set for 2050, we need to get other partners involved. So how can we create a kind of what we call it uh, investment platforms, kind of dedicated financing structures where we can group together public and private entities in order to finance investments which, are, which will lead to, to or which will support the general, over, general goal of, of uh, climate mitigation. We have some examples now uh, uh, starting. But I think it's, it's, a, it's an interesting subject, and especially with the local and public uh, regional authorities, it's interesting to see what can be done. In, indeed, I mean, what, what, as I said, I mean, it, it's, it's necessary to channel financing from entities which are not only the city or the, or the, the public entities. Some other projects more looking at, at, at technologies or at, at, at uh, sectors, street lighting. We have, for example, we will finance the re, uh, energy efficiency refurbishment of street lighting in Vilnius. We have some projects for district heating where we support uh, 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 companies which are running district heating networks in, in France where they want to extend, upgrade their district heating network and also cooling networks, cogeneration. Uh, biomass, for example, biomass uh, cogeneration in, also in France linked to district heating or industry. We have also small-scale biogas plants which we support in several uh, European uh, countries. Gas cogeneration, which is a little bit difficult currently for, for the financial performance. But also um, transport. We finance a lot of tramways, for example, underground uh, metros. Introduction of electric buses is quite uh, increasing currently now. So these are really concrete uh, projects which we, which we are, where the bank is involved. Um, if we target now a little bit more, that's my, my, my favorite subject, energy efficiency. You see what, what the, uh, the bank handed out as loan in the past. So 2017 was a very e excellent year looking at the volume which, were, uh, which we were able to sign for, for energy efficiency projects. Uh, but the main, if you look at, at, at the structure, the main, main uh, um, energy efficiency uh, sector is buildings, and I think this will be continue, continued because here the, the, the challenges are the highest and the, the volumes which are needed. If you look at the whole building stock in all of uh, Europe, you need to do more, much more in this sector. 
some concrete examples here. We, have, we are very present in Bucharest with the different districts. Uh, we make available loans to them where they, which enables these districts to refurbish old uh, uh, pre, uh, industrial pre, uh, produced housing stock in, in, these, in these countries because in general the homeowners are not capable to, to set up the, these, these, uh, these investments at, 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 because they are quite poor and have no capacity. So we are really uh, working together with them in order to make this happen and they, can, they hope to refinance these also to local taxes which are paid by, these, uh, by the inhabitants of these uh, apartments. We have another one where we work with a social housing uh, federal uh, company, which afterwards hands out loans to to local um, local uh, housing companies in Valonia. Here, I mean, the interesting thing is what we need. We need always kind of aggregators. We need somebody who is able to group together investments in order that we can work with them. Because as you see, if you see the volume which we need to move each year we cannot do small scale investment and we are not the best place also. I mean we have other partners which are much better, have better local uh, anchorage being, being it here. The, the regional housing uh, uh, company or we work a lot also with commercial banks which are more better placed to really hand out loans. We have also more sophisticated uh, uh, financing schemes like the European uh, Energy Efficiency Fund where, which the fund is doing loans and also other things like forfeiting schemes, equity shares, etc., uh, where we have also supported quite a lot of projects in, in public uh, in, 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 in urban areas like in uh, District Heating Network in Rennes, public building refurbishment in Rhône-Alpe, or street lighting in Venlo, for example. Uh, this is also an interesting project which we are working with uh, in Poland, for example, to upgrade district heating networks in Poland in order to make them future-proof, reducing, increasing their performance, also changing the supply, going away from coal to more sustainable uh, resources like gas as a transition, but also going into heat pumps, for example, geothermal heat or uh, biomass. Uh, so I think we are quite well positioned to, to cover the different aspects which as, as a local authority you are facing in order to, to go into the direction of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. If we look at, at, the, at the more from a, from a political point of view at uh, what are the challenges for energy efficiency investments, we see that uh, very often still, and that's why I'm, I'm quite uh, glad that we have energy efficiency first, but if we want to really to to live up to this, then we need to, to see what are the obstacles and how to come, how to make a, uh, energy efficiency investments happening. Because in general they are very quite small, they are very diffuse. You have different, a lot of different actors which are needs to be addressed. This is a little bit the list of of uh, obstacles, challenges you have to face uh, when you when you work in this sector. And that's why uh, the, the the bank is quite. Uh, eager to support the, the to, to support potential partners in preparing investments because we see that these are that are lacks it's not so much the investment itself the liquidity in the market is quite high you have enough a lot of uh, banks which are available not only the european investment bank but also you have national promotional banks like in germany kfw or caisse de depot consignation in, in france it's more a question that th these banks need good projects and therefore, we have set up some, some, some support schemes to support, to make available grants or uh, financing for setting up the... the yeah. Yeah, yeah. So here we have the ones, Elena, Jaspers and European Advisory Hub. Urbis is also available. The Advisory Hub is more for small-scale sectors, uh, for small-scale investments for, for, a lot, uh, for, for all sectors also. So you have here some information what, what we can do, what is upstream project identification, project preparation, but also project implementation. My favorite one is the Elena one, which is the technical assistance facility, uh, which you are managing on behalf of the European, invest, uh, European Union. Market replication, so minimum 30 million investment. What is interesting that you have to deliver on the investments. You need to show a kind of, uh, there's a kind of performance obligation, but you get 90%. So, Elena, budget is available. I want to show you some of the sectors where, which can be supported from, from the preparation point of view, not from the investment point of view. 
So it's all the sectors which are really uh, interesting for local authorities and also regional authorities. Also urban transport, not on a, only energy efficiency. Who can benefit from Elena? It can be public sector, but also private sector now. It can be groupings. It can be energy agencies, for example. We have a lot with working with energy agencies, but also with national and, and, and regional and, 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 uh, entities also in, in the Netherlands, in Italy, for example. You can get quite a support for hiring staff for creating, for example, a project implementation unit. You can also get support for uh, legal advice, for tender uh, procurement preparation, which can be quite a challenge if you go, for example, for energy performance contracting. Uh, so th this is quite interesting, I think, to have this in order to prepare good projects. We have one of the um, case studies which I like very much is the Picardie Pass Renovation. renovation which is a, it's a kind of one-stop shop helping local uh, house owners to really do this and also finance them. So it's really covering the whole assistance till financing, which is, I think, very, very special. Uh, Paolo uh, did it. Yeah. Well, I'm close. So it's also smart mobility in Amsterdam. So you find more information on these websites. Many, many thank thanks, Reinhardt. Very interesting, very tempting also, I would say, because uh, <laughs> knowing that so many things can be financed, but, but I'm not a local authority. As I, as I told, I can repeat, I'm not a local authority. And we are going to hear from four local authorities, four different countries. They will tell us how they see the process, how they see the decentralization of the energy sector and the decentralization of energy policy, what type of governance they imagine for this uh, multi-sector, multi-level uh, challenge. And also, what do they think of the offered uh, EU finance? We will have from Italy Florence Simone. We will have from Portugal Angra do Heroismo Jose. We will have from, I will try to, to tell it, Vexieux. Is it that? Roughly. Pronounce the name of your city yourself. Vecre. Avec, like a K. Ah, avec, uh, my God, eh? the, the different way we use the same uh, Latin alphabet. Eh? And then, uh, easier for me, Slovena Ljubljana, because I, I have a Slovene in my team, even too, I have also the director of the uh, European Agency in Ljubljana, Alenka. So, we will start in the same order. Simone, how do you see it, the, 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 the challenge of the policy, the governance needed, and why not this uh, uh, European funding? Five minutes, are you okay? Oh, yes. <clears throat> thank you very much. And first, I, I would like to, to thank the European Union for introducing the municipalities, at least in Italy, to, uh, to I would say, energy planning, because uh, thanks to the covenant of mayors, uh, to the SEP, the Sustainable Energy Action Plans, uh, different measures, uh, introduced the municipalities, which uh, were not accustomed before, to, to think about uh, energy, energy planning uh, and, uh, and energy strategy. So the, um, the point is that when you go down to the local level, as has already been highlighted, there are many, many different uh, pieces of this uh, picture. I was just making an ex uh, uh, a list for, uh, for our, in our case. We have policies on strategy and public lighting. We use the, the Arno River here in Florence to produce energy. We have solar panels. We have ownership. Uh, we, have, we have the owner of the regional uh, uh, utility for gas, which is now split according to the European regulation between uh, distribution and sales, which is uh, relevant for this kind of conversation. We are trying to, uh, to focus on the convergence between energy and digital, the smart grid uh, topic. We have been working on the energy and mobility. We have, have, you've seen the new tramway inaugurated uh, last week in Florence, which is uh, a, a, big, uh, a big jump in terms of uh, reduction. And, and I think also the EB was involved in, the, in this project. Uh, the waste management plans, everything which is about waste management for cities is a, a big uh, topic. The re refurbishment of public properties, and um, it, it's a lot of different activities which are widespread in different parts of the city strategy. And uh, this is a good point, uh, the fact that it's so impressive. The other point is that um, 
these kind of actions are widespread in different uh, pockets. So, for example, if you look at the, 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 the report of the administration for the last five years, which has been published yesterday, there is no, no, no chapters about energy policy because energy is a, is a split uh, inside the different uh, actions. You don't, you don't fight. Of course, you find the tramway. Of course, you find the energy, the, the, the plant uh, for the reducing for the waste management. But you don't find a chapter on, on energy. So it has, be, it has to be uh, designed uh, according to the, the different uh, pieces. And the most important piece, in, uh, which has not been highlighted yet in the, in the life of a city, is the, from this uh, regulation perspective, is the urban planning. So this is, I would say, the, the core of the, of the planning of a city. So if you think long term, of course. So it's, uh, in, in a, in, at city level, urban planning is really the, the way that uh, you can shape uh, everything about energy, for example, in terms of housing, in terms of uh, uh, roads, uh, in terms of uh, everything is really to be, if you want to take uh, at deep level, you need to take, tackle the, the, this issue at the level of urban planning and, the, and all the requirements which are important in order to, to, to develop the city of the, of the future. I would also like to stress the idea that the, the, the energy strategy is a, is a trigger for economic development. This is a topic that mayors are more and more interested. Uh, if you think that, um, uh, for example, uh, some cities have, uh, have a, a very important uh, energy intensive industry, like let's, let's take uh, Prato, for example, the city next to Florence. They are the city of textile industry. In the textile industry, energy is a very important, energy and water are very important resources. That uh, triggered the, the, the strategy of developing a very big uh, uh, and important, uh, compared to the size of the city, uh, multi-utility company. So it's the, the, the idea to really leverage on uh, energy and water management in order to, to develop a, um, a, a strategy for, for the, the economic development of the city or to support the economic sectors of the city. In Florence, we don't have this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, industry. We have different, uh, more uh, uh, third sector industry, and we don't have any multi-utility company. Because typically you have a multi-utility company where you have uh, uh, an economic uh, base which requires, uh, for example, more and more integration of uh, this kind of, uh, of, this kind of, uh, of, um, of resources. Uh, I would like to highlight, uh, uh, to spend one minute to highlight uh, four points that, in my opinion, only one minute. So, so I will go to the final suggestion. So uh, maybe in the next. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, also, if you come back later, I I think that's uh, it's important when we talk, uh, we talk about uh, local level. It's important to uh, to understand that each, in each country local level means something different. Of course, uh, for example, in the case of Italy, we have uh, the municipality level, the municipal level. Then we have a, a metropolitan level. Then we have a regional level. The, the three levels have different, uh, uh, different uh, responsibilities in terms of energy. For example, energy policy it belongs to the regional level. So if you want to, to, to talk about uh, local level in Italy for energy, we also need to encompass the regional level, which has the, the regional plan for, uh, for, uh, for, for example, all the geothermal. In, the, in Tuscany, half of the energy is taken by the geothermal. Which is inside, uh, which is managed by the, the regional government. So the local, local level is articulated, and uh, we need more and more uh, uh, a coordination, not just with the with the European and national level, but also at the at the sub-regional level where we have different uh, layers. This is very interesting because now we are going to Portugal, and I have no idea if it is exactly the same or totally different between uh, because uh, being local doesn't say our local is uh, organized on power, etc. So we are going to Jose to discover what is uh, local in Portugal regarding this issue. Well, thank you for inviting me to be here today. I'll try to use my five minutes as efficiently as I can. Firstly, I would like to, uh, to kind of present the town from where I come. I'm coming from the Azores Islands, so it's not from Portugal in the sense of the geographical Portugal. So I'm coming 2,000 kilometers away in the middle of the ocean, and we are really islands. When I mean really islands. Some of, of the islands that you have here closer to Europe are not so 
islands because they are somehow interconnected. The Azores are too far away to be interconnected, so we are 2,000 kilometers away from Iberia, 3,500 kilometers from Cape Race in Canada. That's our closest point in the other side. So the, the, um, the islands are part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, so they are really volcanoes that come out of the water. I am the mayor of Angra. I mean, my second term as being the mayor. I'm professionally, I'm a professor at the University of the Azores. Angra is the second largest city in the Azores. We have 35,000 inhabitants. We sit in an island called Terceira. The Azores are made of nine islands spread over 600 kilometers. We have 1 million square kilometers of water and 2,300 square kilometers of land. Mm -hmm and 250,000 people living in those nine islands. In, my, in, in our case, we, we live in a very energy-rich environment, extremely rich in energy. We have lots of wind, sometimes too much wind. We have geothermal, because we are, of course, volcanic islands. We have water, we have hydropower, we have some solar energy, although our climate is kind of cloudy, but anyway, it's, it works. And as we live so far away, we need to treat our waste, so, so we have a waste to energy operation too. The mix of energy that we use in the island comes from all these sources in what concerns um, electricity, solar for water heating, we are using quite a bit of it. Most of the time coordinate with heat pumps because in cloudy days, that's the only way we have to do heat pumps that have SA uh, auxiliary energy source electricity because we have too much electricity. During the night we overproduce. We cannot consume all the electricity we are producing. And of course we have some technical issues that I'm going to try to, to tell you what are the constraints that we have. First, first constraints, group of constraints come from the technical side. Although technology has been advancing quite fast, we still have serious problems in what concerns what is called the grid services. As we are an island, we have to regulate frequency and voltage in the grid. That means that we cannot rely solely in the traditional um, renewable energies because, of course, in milliseconds we need to increase the supply or reduce the supply to, to answer the demand. This is a serious issue. This issue is at this point the main limitation in becoming 100% renewable. We are in the 50s, uh, but we still have this problem. Of course, the, 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 the battery technology that is now coming into play seems to be the solution. We are looking at what Tesla has been doing in Australia and other experiences in that order, and especially one experience that is being done in, in the neighboring island of Graciosa, where they are trying to be 100% renewable in the electricity side. Another consideration that we have is electricity can be locally produced. That's the only reliable source of energy that it can produce locally. That means that we are trying to migrate everything as much as we can from the traditional uh, fuels to the energy, to the electricity. Uh, for cooking and water heating, traditionally we use, we, we use propane because we, we are not connected to the, the gas networks. Uh, we are replacing propane for electricity. It's quite a challenge because people are used to have uh, an oven or a stove that works in a few seconds with electricity is not so. So uh, that's one of the challenges that we have is migration for, from propane to electricity. The same goes for mobility. Of course, as we have too much electricity, electricity production during the night, we would like to have lots of electrical cars that would be plugged during the night and would be used during the day. Theoretically, that's a very, a very good thing. In practice, it's quite a challenge because electrical cars are still quite expensive. Okay, I'm going to end. I'm, are still quite expensive. And uh, we have other problems that have to do with the use of those cars, although the island is small and the range is not a problem. 
The two other questions that I would like in the next five minutes to talk about is regulation. We are, we are re in terms of regulation, the energy regulation belongs to the Azorian government, to a regional government. Uh, it has quite a bit of issues that need to be solved so we can become a lot more efficient in terms of energy. We are kind of outdated. In, our, in the Azores, we have a derogation of the European directives on energy. That means we have an electrical company that still is a monopole and that still has an integrated electrical system. That is becoming a problem. And of course, there are the financial questions because changing from, from the traditional energy sources to the new ones requires investment. And it's quite a challenge for the municipality and especially for the citizens. But we are doing quite well. In a few years, we increased from the 20% re renewable energy to close to 50% and we are growing with a mix of energies that we have geothermal waste to energy those are the two bigger sources. Then we have fuel that is used to regulate the grid. I mean, that's the only way that we have at this point to accelerate in milliseconds and the other way around. And we have wind and water. Water does not represent much, but wind is quite big. Thank you. Thank you to you, Jose. You made so clear in, in only five minutes uh, uh, why is so special in uh, Angra do Heroismo. Um, I, will, I will try to do some Portuguese, but it's really oh, it's fr like frozen in my mind. Heroismo. Ça va meilleur comme ça? Heroismo? Yeah. We normally just say anger. <laughs> ah, names, okay, okay. Okay. And you have seen, you, you have heard that it's, it's totally different from Simone. Why Simone was already insisting that Florence is not Prato. And both France and Prato are not Tuscany. They are in Tuscany, but they are not Tuscany itself. So now the, the question is for our colleague from Vecchio. Uh, are you something else, or, or do we know already what you are? I think we are something else, uh, because we are the greenest city in Europe, as you probably know. Otherwise, you know it now. Uh, we got the Green Leaf Award. Uh, last year, and we were immensely proud of that, of course. We have since 1993 reduced our carbon dioxide uh, emissions with 58%, uh, which we are quite happy about. Uh, we live in the south of Sweden, uh, where there are a lot of forests and a lot of lakes. Forest, 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 lakes, lakes, lakes. That's the way it is. Uh, and the city of Vec, uh, with about 90,000 inhabitants, are the center of this, this forest region. And uh, we started actually in 1887 uh, to work with urban planning. We were the second city in the world uh, which was electrified. And then afterwards, uh, more less significant cities as London and New York came along. Um, so, so we have been working quite a lot with, with urban planning. I think uh, the history is, is that we are from a very poor region. Uh, in the late uh, 19th century, a, a lot of people emigrated to the United States because of the, the famine. And uh, we have been always relied on, on working out the methods by ourselves, not being uh, relied on, on the state or, or the region or something like that. Uh, so we, we like to, to find our own solutions. And we have in, in VEC uh, now 100% biofuel heating, uh, which means that, that um, uh, the people who are connected to the grid is 100% uh, renewable. Uh, today, 80% of the inhabitants are connected to the grid, so there are still something to do. Uh, when we put in the, the latest uh, uh, investment, we, we were also able to produce electricity and we now produce about 25% of the electricity used in the, in the municipality, and we have the capacity of producing about two-thirds when it's up and running. Um, so for us, it, it's very important to have uh, long-term political uh, unanimity that we are... And it's all, all, all about 
creating a frame, creating an identity. We are the greenest city in Europe. So if you are right wing or left wing, you, you cannot, if you want to survive the next election, you cannot say that this is not important, this is not for us. Uh, we could use oil again. Uh, we phased out all the oil in, in the 80s, and if somebody would say that, that uh, climate change or, or uh, energy eff efficiency is not important, they wouldn't be elected in Vecua. Uh, so I think that's very important. Since the 70s, we have had this political uh, ID to, to put Vecua on the map, and, and, and in, after 30 years, we, we succeeded. Uh, so th I think for us that is that is very Im important. What we have been doing the late on the latest years is also to to use all the food waste and, and to produce biogas for our buses in the city. And we work a lot with uh, European Union projects, smart cities, for example. We have a big project right now uh, together with Aarhus and uh, also with Kaunas in Lithuania, which is very interesting. So for us, it's, it's all about being in the forefront and, and trying new techniques and, 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 and uh, to be self-sufficient, I would say. That's the main point from, from the city of Equa. Uh, and uh, of course, it's, it's uh, very interesting to see um, that so many people are coming to Equa to see the different projects that we have been doing together with the European Union. So, so for us, it's, it's important to continue in this way. And uh, of course, we, we like when people come and see what we're doing. Thank you. Wonderful to see that again, we, ha we have something different for the fourth time, eh, because Simone was referring to Prato as a counterexample. So the question is asked again to Ljubljana. I know that Ljubljana, you, you are the main city in your country. Eh? You are the leading city, but it doesn't tell who, what you are and what you do. Okay, <clears throat> city of Ljubljana is the capital of Slovenia. So in the city of Ljubljana, we are really trying to be sustainable and we are really on a fast way to do it. We became the green capital of Europe in 2016 because we were very fast in sustainability and how everything really started. City of Ljubljana is a small city, it has a quite small budget, so we also have to find the way how to finance our project. So usually we were trying to get money from, let's say, Interreg projects, from, um, uh, let's say, Civitas and uh, from other. And then we find out, I began at city planning department, then I was in environmental department, and then I decided that I have to put the planners and the envir environmentalists together in the energy sector, because it is a very important sector. It, at the beginning, we had the coal-fired, let's say, uh, district heating. Now it is mixed with biomass and uh, gas, and now we are using much more renewables. But uh, what I would like to tell here is how we are preparing our, we prepared ourselves, and afterwards we were looking for the money to prepare our energy refurbishment projects within the city of Ljubljana. So we find out the technical assistance, Elena, what we are very grateful that we have got it in 2012. This is very important. And we started with contract with the European Investment Bank in 2013. We finished the first project by energy performance contracting uh, in 2018. So it was a long way to discuss with the government, with the ministries of finance, infrastructure, how to implement the energy performance contracting. There was no legal issues at the beginning. So we have to work hand in hand with the ministries. The most difficult was Ministry of Finance. So when we prepared our first decree on PPP EPC approach, we waited for the guidelines on Ministry of Infrastructure to put them that we will be able to, uh, let's say, sign the PPP-EPC concession contract. So it lasts, let's say, two years. It was just competitive dialogue. 
with private partners to find the way how to finance it. And to be short, at the end, we sign a contract and we also get the cohesion funds for the, let's say, deep energy retrofit. And the share of investment is 49% uh, uh, should be for the public partner, but as we have cohesion, it is 9% and the, uh, let's say 51% for the uh, private partner. And the payback period is 15 years. So this is the first, and nowadays we just signed the second PPP PC for another 11 objects, and we are preparing also the third PPP EPC in the city of Ljubljana. But what is even more interesting, we are also trying to be smarter. Uh, I asked our mayor if we can also apply for the horizon, and we said that we will try to make a city smart, not efficient only and environmental friendly, also smart and friendly for the citizens. This is the short version. You made pretty clear something else, which is uh, the cost, the amount of investment, the financing. So I will cut the discussion into two baskets. The first basket I will open immediately is what is differentiating the local units? Is it the sources of energy you have and the uses of energy you do? sources of energy you have, you did insist, sources of uh, uh, uses of energy you did insist, or also the rights being given to your authority to act, or the local political will, because it seems that in the city of Vecchio, they have a strong will to do the, their things their way. We will discuss this, four minutes each, and after that we will go to cost, investment, and financing. Do you agree? So, I'm changing the rules. Four minutes, annulé. Four minutes, and we will start with Simone. Simone, sources of energy, uses of energy, rights to act, political will. <clears throat> in prior to joining the metropolitan city of Florence, I worked at the uh, Prime Minister's office in Rome, and I, over, I used to oversee projects of different cities uh, in, related with big investment, with the uh, Casa Deposite Prestiti, the most important Italian development bank. Uh, what I saw is uh, that the, the, the country is much more different than I expected. It's maybe a naive observation, but uh, not all the countries have the same uh, biodiversity that, uh, that Italy has. It's really a completely different country from the north to the south. With, um, it's not different uh, only... F first, because some regions have uh, autonomous uh, organization, autonomous uh, power, so they can, they, they're on their own. They have much more money, based, by the way and other regions have a more uh, entrepreneurial culture, and they have, a, a, they have a, a lot of, uh, I would like to continue with what I said before, they have, there is a, a lot of pressure on the public bodies to do something for, for energy. For example, um, generally energy is in the internal areas, the production of energy, while consumption of energy is in the metropolitan areas. So the, the, this is a, a new chapter. So how to, uh, in Europe, we have a lot of discussion how to put together the metropolitan areas and the internal areas. Energy is a, it's that, it's an amazing uh, tool for bridging uh, these two areas. And uh, some regions, like uh, Lombardy, for example, are very active on, on, on that, and very, because they have used hydropower, for example, in a very efficient way, the same for Trentino. While other regions, they, they are very much lagging behind. For example, in the south, if you take Basilicata, where they're going to vote now, they get a lot of money from uh, ENI for the use of uh, oil. So for them, uh, energy is uh, it's a kind of um, it's a rent. They, 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 actually, they're not developing due to the rent they are getting. So in the north, they use energy to develop. In the south, they use energy not to develop because they use it as, a, as a rent. They get a lot of money from, from ENI. They, so it's, a, it's important to, uh, this is the reason I like uh, regulation, because at least you have a, a common ground, uh, a flexible common ground, a very light regulation with, based on principle, with, uh, uh, with um, the, the putting together uh, and getting critical mass uh, 
and uh, being able to create uh, an environment which is uh, not so different as, uh, as we have now, because today it's really, it's really, really amazing. I, I think that in this perspective, we never discussed about the role of national champions in the country, because we talk about the local level, but national champions like EDF in France, uh, ENI and NL in Italy, they are everywhere. So we, we should, uh, at least part of my job is to involve uh, big companies in uh, local development. And I think that there is a lot of work to do in this, uh, in this sector because they use really things at cities at local levels as a, um, as a marketing to get some publicity, to get some, they, for example, in the, in the electric mobility sector. They may have a much bigger role in uh, local development, especially in the energy sector. Thank you very much. Pretty clear. Huh? I'm, I'm learning a lot. Now we know we are going to Angra. Jose. Okay. Uh, I think the issue of political will, it's mainly the main issue to, um, that we have to, the main one that we have to deal when we talk about energy transition at the local level. Of course, uh, every community has its own view of the world. When you start talking at local level, mm -hmm. things get very different. And of course, priorities have to respond to those differences. Mm -hmm. And the political will of investing in, in the energy sector depends on the citizens' acceptance of those policies. And of course, those depend on the views that, mm -hmm. that people have. Of course, this, this has another limit. You can have all the will of this world and you do not have the means to change things. So mm. uh, it's this interplay between the will and the ideas and, um, and the means that the communities have, the means, I mean the financial and technical ones, that make things really move. And the experience that, that I have, I'm in my second term as mayor, so I have been at this point five years w working as the mayor. And along this time, I have kind of learned that leadership in these areas required. Political will alone doesn't work if there is no leadership. Leadership depends on knowledge, depends on the view that people have of the world, and of course, depends on how people communicate. Mm. Uh, I live in an island with two, two municipalities. Mm. I am at the south coast. I have about 60% of the population. I have a colleague in the other side of the island with the remaining 40% of the population. Although the island is quite integrated, everything is very close, policies are quite different in many respects, because it depends on the view that people feel on, the, mm. uh, on this subject. So I would say that the main, constraint, the main constraints are the creation of this political will and then having the technical knowledge and the technical assistance and the financial means for investment. Those are the questions that need to be addressed at the local level. Mm. When you solve this equation, you have very rapid movement. Actually, what we heard from Sweden, it's basically this. They solve this question, they move rapidly in this direction. Mm -hmm. I think all over Europe, it's possible to do the same thing if we solve this situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, again, very interesting. Huh? It's, there is things you can learn only by meeting the, the actors. Huh? But uh, to joke a little bit, I will say that uh, your island doesn't seem ready to get the French verticality of President Macron. Huh? <laughs> you, you, you see things differently. Well, we are in the middle of the ocean. Macron is very far away. I'm joking. <laughs> because I'm French, I can joke with my own <laughs> president. Magnus. Yes, I think one of the main things in Vecchio is that we have had the authority to act because a lot of the land that is built on is owned by the city. So we can put on demands, for example, when we make new houses, they have to have 55 kilowatt hours per, per square meter per year in energy demand. Um, and, and then the builders have to to do it. So it's, it's very 
easy for us to say that if you want to build on the, on the municipality grounds, you need to do this. Mm. You need to have 50% of your housing in wood, not concrete, but in wood, so that we can uh, uh, catch the carbon uh, mm. acid. Uh, so I think the authority to act for us in Vecco is, is, is quite easy. Uh, since we, we, uh, we are a growing city and, and last year we, we built about 5,000 new apartments uh, in a, a city with 9,000 inhabitants, that's quite a lot. And 50% of those were in wood and everybody was on, on 55 kilowatt hours. Uh, I think the problem for us is, is to combine these uh, big demands on, on new buildings and also on, on refurbishment mm -hmm with cheap housing. Mm. That's the big problem. Ah, like, uh, of course, uh, yeah. Sabine said. Exactly. Sabine said. Uh, so, so for us, uh, we need to, to find, we have, during the last years, we have been doing, rising and rising the, the uh, um, uh, how do you say, um, uh, the regulations. Mm. Uh, which has made the buildings more expensive, of course. Mm. So the rates are very high. Um, but unfortunately, we also have our own company. So the company who is doing the district heating and the electricity and the uh, biogas is, is owned by the municipality. Mm. It's a free market, of course. Uh, everybody can choose whatever they want to, but we are always cheapest mm. because the grid is already there. So if you build a new house, it's always cheaper mm. to put it on the, on the district heating than choosing another source of energy. Uh, so, so that's why we can have 80% of the inhabitants connected to the, to the district heating uh, grid. Uh, and combined with the cooling uh, and with the broadband, uh, it's all in the same uh, business and is owned by the, by the municipality. Thank you. Thanks to you. You do not have cooperatives like uh, what uh, Josh is, do is doing. Cooperatives in the energy sector, you do not have? Oh, yes. Cops, you have also? They are small. We are biggest. Ah. Local. Uh, now, Alenka. Well, okay, in Ljubljana, at the beginning, it was not a really big political will, but after, let's say, gaining this uh, technical assistance, Elena, and prepar preparation of pre-investment documentation, our mayor said, well, let's try it, because we also have to persuade government to prepare the guidelines and the legal issues to do it. So at the beginning, it really lasts a long, not because of us, but because of the others. But what was also very interesting, that the let's say, principle of the schools. They were not really interested in being refurbished because they said that they could do it with their own money and then it was also very difficult to persuade them that it is better to get, let's say, money from somewhere else and to do it and then they can spend this money on, on maybe learning or s some other things. So it was really, I would say, a very good project our mayor was standing behind us, and he also wanted, really wanted to implement also the renewables within the buildings, so we made within another project, which was Geoplasma, it is still ongoing, uh, let's say we were studying the potential of shallow, shallow geothermal energy, so we used the water water heat pumps in this object as well, as well as photovoltaic and uh, collectors for sun energy. So let's say this is what we really appreciated, what we would really like also to do in the future. We also decided in 2015, it was the first year that for our object, for the city <coughs> objects, we ordered electricity 100% from renewables. Because at that time we have no other, let's say, mean to do something in this way. Many thanks to you. So now the landscape is clearer. I, I, I won't say that it is clear because my knowledge was very little, but it's clearer. But I would like to come closer to Reinhardt. Money, money, money. Even a good money uh, with, with a good banker. So 
What about the cost, the amount of investments, the financing condition? Simone. I think it's a very, it's a very important uh, topic. We, at the beginning, it was said that uh, also the EU uh, often uses money to, to support the policies, to support the strategy. So it's, uh, I, I look from that perspective. The point is that if you look at, uh, at this topic, uh, energy projects from the, the finance side, you deal with the projects. If you, deal, if you look from the uh, policy side, you deal with the strategy regulation. So we need to find a, a common area, a common ground, which is somewhere, somewhere in between uh, projects and uh, uh, regulation and strategies. Uh, I think that the, the experience of, the, the, of some of the things that were discussed this morning, like the Covenant of Mayors, for example, like the Elena projects, uh, the, there is, it's, it's not an empty space. It's a space with a lot of uh, trial and error, with uh, something that can be improved. Uh, but uh, it's a, it's, there are two, three main guidelines that I would like to stress. One is the integration of projects, so, which is somewhere in between uh, the single project and the, the, and the regulation. We still have uh, sm two small projects. We need uh, to get uh, critical mass. Uh, and uh, so, for example, if you look at the, uh, at the, the Covenant of Mayors and the different uh, list of actions from cities, you will see that uh, the energy projects are often the, the, the smaller in number in compared with transportation projects and other projects. So the, the integration and the, which facilitate also the bankability of projects, it's, it's an important uh, topic. The, the second one, I think, is really to, to leverage on the experience of the, the, on the, the CEP, the Covenant of Mayors, so what has been put in place by the, by the union, and to, to, work, to start from there. Uh, for, for a mayor, uh, making a, a step toward, uh, a further step toward uh, energy efficiency projects uh, and uh, regulation is uh, a natural evolution of the Covenant of Mayors uh, framework, which uh, at least in Italy was very, was very popular when it was launched, and we have seen from the, from the, uh, the picture. And then uh, the, uh, the, 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 there is one last point that I think it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting should be, should be tackled, is that we deal with uh, bankable projects. Sometimes bankable uh, projects are a very small subset of all the projects uh, that may be quasi-bankable quasi projects. So projects that uh, need uh, some kind of support in order to be, to be bankable. And I've seen many, many in my, in my experience. Uh, I would like to, to see a, a form of a financial uh, support and financial regulation that uh, not only deals with the, the bankable projects, but with uh, a, a, broader, uh, a, a broader portfolio of projects, including also projects that maybe not exactly bankable from financial perspective, but they are very important from uh, economic development, uh, from institutional development, uh, from uh, a lot of different uh, uh, axes that uh, cannot be forgotten from our, from our perspective. And I think that uh, the, the energy projects are a good example of, of that. In, in my experience, I've seen that they're quite complex to be built because you have uh, the big investor, you have uh, the local investor, you have the cities, you have the banks, uh, you have the, the local utilities. So it's a, it's a very complex uh, process. The, the other suggestion that I give is, is to foster even more the, the capacity building and uh, technical assistant uh, perspective because uh, too many cities do not, uh, do not get involved because they don't know how to, how to deal with the complex projects. Because for cities, energy is not the, the core activity. So it's, uh, it's often difficult to, to find uh, even civil servants who, who have a, a vague idea of uh, what to do in this, uh, in this field. So technical assistance is, uh, is very important, but for a, a bigger number of projects, I mean, in the thousands, not in the, in the dozens. I even do not remember how to stop it. Uh, thank you, Simone. Now we are jumping or uh, swimming to Jose. Well, uh, technical assistance is surely uh, an important issue. And uh, not only technical assistance in the sense of the, the technologies themselves, but techn technical assistance in terms of helping to make good choices in terms of the technology to be used and the, and the strategy to be followed. 
I think that's, a, that's one of the most important issues because a good plan and a plan that has a good technical basis is one that for sure can have success. The other way around normally doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I would think that technical assistance is one of the main questions. The other question that has also a technical basis is the choice of financial, the financial way of doing the things. Mm -hmm. Should one go to the, to the European Investment Bank? Should we go to the commercial banks? Mm -hmm. Should we split the investment in between the different authorities? Because normally those issues, the, the issues that have to do with energy are not the sole responsibility of one of the governance levels. Mm -hmm. How to split that? How to split with the citizens? Mm -hmm. Because the beneficiaries can also be participants of, yes, the, of, of the investment. And of course, this requires also uh, financial knowledge and technical assistance. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the technical assistance is one of the main issues and the knowledge on these issues is one of the hurdles that especially smaller communities have to, mm -hmm. to pass. Because otherwise, one firstly cannot, can make bad choices and secondly, can make disastrous financial investments mm -hmm. if things are not properly uh, prepared. Mm -hmm. So I would put this stress in that side. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Jose, because it's exactly what we call in our uh, academic uh, uh, dialect uh, multi-level issue, and you already did the empowerment of the citizens, which is also uh, to consider, particularly in the energy sector and uh, in, in the climate challenge, so uh, I do appreciate a lot. Now we are coming back to Sweden. Mm. Yes. Um, well, when it comes to financing, I think the big shift that we made in the 80s from, from heating the houses with oil or electricity, uh, we had big funds from the state to do that in the 80s, uh, because that was in the swallow uh, uh, after the oil crisis and so on. Everybody was afraid of, of using oil too much in Sweden. So there was, a, I think that is one of the main uh, uh, things that made the district heating organization or a company uh, actually uh, viable and, and it's, it's now making money. So uh, we charge what it costs and, and the, this company puts in about 20 million euros in the municipality budget every year because they do a profit. Uh, but if we didn't had, have the, uh, the, uh, the money from the state in the 80s, it wouldn't be possible. The biogas uh, is not uh, making any profit in the now, so that's why we use it for the buses. So it's a, it's a zero-sum uh, game. Um, we have some private uh, customers as well, but there is no profit in the biogas production uh, yet. Uh, so, so for us, it, as it has been very important to, to go from primary uh, energy that is using, for example, electricity to heat the houses, to, to, to use the electricity to what it, it is best for, uh, running appliances and so on. Um, so I think also when we do this, when we have these uh, long-term um, decisions that saying that in two. 2030, the, the municipality of Equus should be fossil free. It means that the companies has to, to, to think about what they can sell to the municipality. So I think that, that, that uh, uh, municipality procurement is, is a very important tool to use uh, when you buy things for the municipality. And, and if you have the, the, the long term decisions in place, then the, uh, the uh, suppliers would will understand that if we want to be here in 10 years, we need to, to change some things in our production and so on. This it comes to, 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 of course, electricity and, and energy, but also to food and everything that we, the municipality needs. Um, so I think that the government in Sweden actually has been quite um, progressive in uh, putting the oil away and putting the, the possibility for local municipalities to create companies that is today profitable. Uh, and that was made in the 80s and 90s. 
So that is what we are living from now. Again, very rich, very inspiring. Alenka. If we are talking about energy supply for the city of Ljubljana generally, I think there is still a lot of questions and a lot of issues that we have to, uh, let's say, solve. Because we have our public company that is supplying, let's say, the district heating system, and we have also natural gas system. That is, let's say, in some, somehow they are also making profit, and it is quite difficult to change their politics. So this is the first issue that we are trying to solve, and we are really working hardly on this. I think that they will also replace some of this uh, uh, district heating also f with gas, with natural gas, but I'm not really happy with this. And I would also like, let's say, to persuade our politic politicians to give more, let's say, importance to the renewables, even though if they influence on our networks, let's say. So this is the problem. And this is also the, the main task that I will have now is how to persuade politicians, because they also depend somehow on, let's say, our public companies to change. Many thanks. So a fantastic um, overview of uh, different aspects of local issues. But uh, now we might come back to Reinhardt and get from Reinhardt some comments because we, we did hear from uh, four municipalities for about one hour. So Reinhardt, how do you see it? Yeah, I think it was very interesting, illustrative also for from our colleagues from the different uh, cities. I mean, it really shows a little bit the the situations which local authorities encounter. I mean, this is not new, but if you really understand what is really happening in the ground, you see that there are large differences. I mean, if you look at, at, at Germany or at, uh, at Sweden, where the local authorities have their own municipal works, or utilities, and uh, in other countries, they, they don't have it, so they need to get along and uh, still play a role. I think this is, a, this is a little bit the challenge. So it means also, in the end, that we do not have necessarily uh, solutions which can be applied everywhere. I mean, we need to really look into what is the concrete situation in, in the different countries, even at, even at regional level and in, in the specific context. And uh, I think the, the, the interesting remarks were that uh, uh, to, to make the step from, from sustainable energy action plans to come to really concrete investments. This is a, it's a, it's a step which is quite large. You need a lot of know-how to do this. And, uh, uh, and uh, I think it's, it's uh, the, the, the requests which were um, expressed that the, the local authorities need support for doing this, for having, having uh, uh, assistance in order to make, make these uh, decisions, to make good decisions, and also look into financing. Financing indeed is, is still a, a crucial point. It's not only financing, it needs also the, the, the economic conditions needs to be and the financial conditions need to be sufficiently, sufficiently interesting, which is in general more the national level, but still under current conditions already today, there's a lot of investments which can, could take place in order to promote, to develop energy efficiency or renewable energies. And um, just to make a little bit of publicity for, for what the EIB can offer, uh, besides, I think, to, to have support schemes in place in, in the member states. But uh, the, the, uh, the, we have the advisory hub, so there is uh, ad advice available, especially for financing schemes, and also, Elena, for implementing large-scale investments. So I think there are tools already available which could be used. Many thanks, Reinhardt. Now we have to go to the people. Power to the people. Vox Populi, Vox Dei as uh, Roman used to say. Uh, first one, maybe uh, Roman, Paolo. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you the speaker for the excellent point. Yes, thank you for this, to the speakers and the panel, very interesting point. I have some comment to make and, and trigger some questions. First of all, on the role of munici municipal district heating networks, is good as we heard in Vaxio because they are using biomass. 
but uh, we experienced it especially in uh, some new member states uh, where there has been a traditional system of district heating uh, that is this is the one of the worst enemy to energy efficiency in buildings because of course if you improve the efficiency in buildings you reduce the sales and municipality will not make any more money uh, that is was mentioned as a way to raise a municipal budget so uh, not always is good to have a municipal district company, which is, uh, you know, a source of revenue for the municipalities that maybe is in conflict with uh, reducing energy demand in buildings. Uh, unless maybe it's sustainable, it's very efficient. And also in the future, we have to think more and more about other alternatives because house become, or buildings become almost net, net zero energy. Uh, we also want to promote heat pumps. Uh, uh, so. The, the, the landscape becomes very, very um, challenging in future, and you cannot just say that everything should be a uh, large system, municipal system. And second point, nobody raised in the financing, the, the instrument taxation, raised local taxes, pay, make the polluters pay, especially the emission, other transportation or buildings. For example, you can have, uh, uh, usually the property tax goes to the local authorities. And you can make, for example, buildings that are not efficient pay more, and buildings which are very efficient or, or less carbon intensive with the renewables pay less. And kind of bonus malus, and the same goes for cars, for uh, restricted areas. And, and finally, another comment that I would like to hear from the panel is about the cost effectiveness of <coughs> policy or, or measures that you discuss, or the, the payback time, or whatever you call it or the bankabilities. I think more and more we look also at the concept of co-benefits. So you can just say I do these measures because it comes, it's paid back in so many years, but I do these measures because may have social impacts, health impacts, it's very important, pollution in cities, especially with, from transportation, and all these ones should be taken into account. It might be also it could be interesting to hear from Ryan that how the, the banks in his uh, assessment of the financial performance of uh, investment they finance if they take into account the current benefits that may be generated by these measures. So thank you. Thank you, Paolo. You're really an expert. You have a very precise view of the, of the issues. Uh, whom are the panelists willing to react? Within our public-private partnership, let's say uh, the private partner is quite secure that he choose be between a lot of objects. Let's say the combination of the objects that they will that they will be paid back within five, 15 years, and it showed quite quite soon that the savings are much higher that, than in uh, the contract. So it is very good. And it is also one issue. We never, let's say, let the private partner to be also the energy supplier for the buildings, because usually the price of the energy source is very varying. So it is also, let's say, it's not very good for public sector. And we also had, the, I didn't mention, but we also had the project Waste to Energy. But due to the, let's say, due to the uh, opposition of the citizens, we were not able really to make it. Thank you. Somebody else to react? Because I think uh, the conflict between energy efficiency and, and uh, selling more district heating and so on, it's, for us it's, it's a simple uh, answer because uh, the municipality owns the company and the municipality put the guidelines to the to the company in the in the energy plan that we have, so they have to be playing on the open market. They have to make a profit, and they have to work with energy efficiency, because that's what the politicians have said to them that they need to do. So for us, it's 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 quite simple since we we own them, and that means that we are not uh, we are not uh, talking about heat pumps, for example, because we don't want the people to to use heat pumps. We want them to be on the grid. Uh, but everybody can do what they want because it's, it's, it's an open market. But, but since we are always cheapest, they, they tend to choose us. 
Um, and for example, with the taxation, in, in Sweden we have a local taxation, as you said. Uh, there is actually no difference in that taxation right now. It's only on the square meter area. And uh, that's why we in VECWA put the 55 uh, energy demand on every new building and 75 on every re refurbished building uh, per annum. So that's, that's a quite good numbers, I think. Well, in, in our case, we operate uh, a municipal company that uh, supplies water, takes care of trash and all the wastewater and everything that has to do with the sanitation. And we operate this waste to energy system. Up till 1983, the city operated the electrical grid. It was at that in that year it was integrated into a regional, I mean, state company that now is 51% public, 49% private. Uh, but but we still have uh, quite a bit of uh, relation with this company. We sell our energy to them, and they then distribute and supply. We buy the street lightning from them for most of the area. Uh, we don't have district heating due to climate conditions, although we should have it uh, because we have problems with excess moisture in most of the buildings. It's one of the problems that, that uh, most people are now investing in heat pumps because of that. Uh, the question of uh, heating the water, it's normally done, traditionally done, using propane. Now is, we are trying to switch it to electricity because we, we are trying to convert because we can produce lots of electricity in the island, trying to increase the um, consumption of electricity. In terms of the money for all that, of course, we collect, we collect a fee from everybody that is in the water grid. The water ends up associated to the water supply. Uh, there is the taxes, the tax or the, the price for most of these services. That, that means we get something, a net profit of about half a million from seven million sales in water. And we get about two million from electricity sales. And of course, we have property tax and 5% of the income tax and the tax on cars. Um, uh, th those are the main sources of income for the town. The property tax represents about 25% of our income and uh, the 5%, uh, another 10, 15% of the income. Uh, the remaining income are mainly a redistribution formula that exists in between the the Azorian government, the central, the Portuguese central government, mm -hmm. and the towns. There is a formula that redistributes part of the um, of the general taxation to the towns, and we receive from that we receive about 40, 50 percent of our total income. Mm -hmm. Our investments in the area of the energy have been mostly supported by the company that manages the water, the sanitation. It's, it's very similar to what the Germans have with their Stadtwerk. It's about the same. The income from that has been the main source of investment in the energy sector. Thank you. I, I think that the three questions are very pertinent to the, to the topic of today. The, I, don't, I don't have a unique uh, answer for the municipal companies because uh, we have seen in Italy that some of them are very successful and others are full of debts so in the same business in the same size of city so it's uh, really it's re very much related to the entrepreneurial uh, uh, culture of each uh, of each city uh, I would say the um, my, my point is that uh, in this if we want to follow the, the, the discussions of today, I would rather like to have uh, multi-utility companies than single sector uh, companies, because a uh, single industry, because there are two different possibilities in, uh, in uh, municipal companies. Either a company that uh, have gas, water, electricity, lighting, or companies that uh, just have one sector. In, uh, in, to have most of the efficiencies, it's important to have uh, as many aggregations as possible. The, um, 
I would not, uh, I would never uh, use only profit to judge, to evaluate the, this company. For example, we have a, we run a, a very successful water company in Florence, but uh, the, the, the company always make advertisement to reduce the use of water. So uh, paradoxically, it's, it's again, it's in, it, against its interest. The, a company would, uh, would like to have as much water consumption as possible while the social interest is, is to reduce the consumption of water. So it's, you cannot just use a profit for a company to, to, to make these kind of judgments. For local taxes, I think that uh, I, of course, like the, the principle that uh, who pollutes uh, pay. It's important to see where taxes, uh, where, which is the, the institutional level of taxes. For example, we only have taxes on, on mobility in, um, in, the, in our environment. We put these incentives in, uh, for, for example, uh, touristic bus. Each touristic bus that go inside the city center, we have thousands of touristic bus, pay 200 euros in Florence. So it's a, it's, yes, it's a big disincentive to keep them out of the, to keep them out of the city. So the, but we cannot uh, put taxes on other uh, activities that we would like, for example, housing. And, um, and so to, to conclude, I think that, uh, that uh, when you come down to cities, everything is much, uh, is, it's uh, put together. The social and the economic, the environmental consideration are uh, mix each other. You cannot uh, disentangle one, one from the others. Yes, coming back to the question from Paolo on, on cost effectiveness. Indeed, I mean, um, the, the, this one indicator for sure, I mean, we have heard just from Simone that the other, other uh, considerations, especially at, at uh, local uh, city level, can be taken into account. Uh, from, a, from a bank perspective, uh, what our interest is, uh, we need to get repaid. From, uh, for the loan which we hand out. So there must be a possibility to be able to re refinance this. This can be either to uh, subsidies which will reduce the uh, upfront investment amount or there are revenues kind of uh, which will generate, which will repay this. So from this perspective, uh, I mean, we need to, to be sure that uh, the, the loans can be repaid. The business model plays then a certain role indeed. Uh, we do not look only at, at the business model, we look also at the economic uh, justification of investments because sometimes you have, as I said, you have a lot of subsidies uh, or feed-in tariffs, for example. And the question is if this is still an economically justified investment. And there, indeed, we look at all the other impacts which you cited. Uh, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. We have uh, scenarios about the, the value of uh, avoided CO2 emissions, tons per uh, euro per tons of CO2 avoided, uh, especially also for, for buildings. If you look at the building sector, the situation is, uh, is very often like this, that investments in the, in the insulation or replacement of windows will not deliver on, on a very short investment period because uh, the basically you do these investments also for improving the value of your building. So we try to also take, catch, into, uh, catch this in, in our economic appraisals that the value will improve if you invest into this. And I think these are subjects also which are necessary to, to be uh, shown and uh, demonstrated for, for, the, for the investor in order that he sees that he has additional benefits which, will, which have, may, may have also monetary impacts so that he is quite comforted in taking, for example, an investment decision. That's for us crucial that investments will take place. Thank you, Reinhardt. I will take remarks from three people, Giuseppe, Olga, Ilaria, but I cannot guarantee that you will get uh, answers, but do your remarks. Thank you. Um, a short question, uh, but maybe it is a big issue. Um, should we ask the, the local authorities or more generally the, the local communities to play a significant role in energy technological innovation? That is, it is clear that most of the measures we are talking about to be implemented at the local level, we require some kind of innovation and more generally the low carbon transition is uh, much about technological innovation. But does it mean that the local level has just to buy what is on offer from the point of view of energy technologies, or in this case, it means that it could be very, could become strongly dependent on, on suppliers of technology, so the technological choices will, will be done by someone else, 
not by the local communities? Or should we expect that some funding should be channeled, channeled toward increasing the capabilities for research and development at local level? Of course, the reply, the objection could be, well, but the local authorities do not have a technology office, they don't file applications for patents, and so on. They are not involved in that kind of business. But, well, my question is whether it is a necessary condition for successful implementation of these local measures to be supported by some kind of local investments in research and development. Yeah, just a very uh, uh, short comment, uh, because uh, what, especially what Magnus told us uh, is just an obvious uh, hint that uh, it's political, political ambition uh, that we need. And, and I think Martin's uh, picture is right, that, that it's not the most rational uh, uh, way we are following. We, we are somewhere in the struggle with all the interests and all the money and the lobby fights, whoever. So, so uh, it would be a lot easier uh, to have a political ambition. Uh, it, it sounds a little bit like, like, like we are doing opposition, guerrilla stuff uh, to, to bridge the gap what, what, is, uh, what the politicians, what the policymakers are not doing. So, so just to make it clear, political ambition would help a lot uh, for what we are looking at, tr energy transition. And it's, uh, I come from Germany, it's, it's, it's uh, nor on the federal level, nor in my region, North Rhine-Westphalia, with 16 million uh, citizens. Uh, it's, it's an, we are not a good example now. So uh, that will help a lot. Yes, thank you. This is a more a clarification question to Mr. Six. Um, because at Florence School, we, uh, the costs of the energy transition, how to finance uh, the energy transition is probably one of the most debated topic, uh, topics at the moment. So um, you explained very clearly which are the possibilities given by the European Investment Bank, loans uh, to, uh, to cities uh, and others, co-financing projects. Uh, on the other hand, you have the projects of common interests by the European Commission, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, as of this year, will expand the scope to include also um, local, more local projects, for example, supporting uh, the sector coupling between electricity and gas and so on. So if, I was wondering if you could help me understand the link between the projects, the, the financing possibilities that you just described and the financing of these projects of common interest to which, if I'm not mistaken, the European Investment Bank also participates. Thanks. Reinhard, if you're able to answer in one minute, you have it. Then well, we will get I mean, three minutes indeed, uh, as we are very closely connected to the Commission, we are also very often involved in financing projects of common interest. I mean, this is very, I mean, these are very big uh, investments. So, I mean, we, we are really called to, to participate in order to make such projects happen. Um, it will be interesting to see if this uh, takes uh, uh, other sizes, other, 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 other directions. As I said, I mean, we still have our economic appraisal of projects, so from an economic point of view, it must make sense. So we don't, if I be a little bit short, we don't want to build white elephants. I mean, this is not our purpose. So it must be shown that this is really of economic interest. Thank you, Reinhardt. Any superhero able in two minutes to answer everything? Oh, we will try Jose and after, oh, yeah. Alenka and then. Okay, maybe I will just answer one, two, and th three <laughs> questions. Importance of technology knowledge within the, let's say, uh, local communities. I think it is very important, but it is not, let's say, we have a lot of work, so we also have to hire the experts to help us. But it is very important to have this knowledge if there is a political ambitious, ambition, in our case it is, it is a big political ambition to change, to do more sustainable also in the field of energy. And the second question, um, second question was energy transition. 
Yes, it is also, it is necessary to do something within this. So uh, we have ambition, we, ha we have to, no, we don't need to bridge the gap. We, we know that we can do it, but we need money. This is, again, the same question. <laughs> I think that we are cooperating very good with the European in, uh, Investment Bank. So I th I'm quite sure that they will be able to finance good projects. And if they will find it is good projects, then we will also get financing. Thank you, Alenka. We will finish with you. I'll, be, I'll go uh, straight to one question, the question that is on the basis of Giuseppe's comment. It's quite an important issue, knowing what is the role of, of the local authorities in the energy trans transition. Local authorities come in very different forms and shapes. We have local authorities with millions, ones with a few thousand inhabitants. We have the ones that have a lot of autonomy, the ones that do not have so much autonomy. So if you look at, uh, around in Europe, you'll see that local authorities are quite different from country to country, and even within each of the states, they are quite, quite different. But even, if, even considering all these differences, and of course the totally different capacity, financial and technical capacity that they have, they must play a crucial role in energy transition. Energy transition is something that has to happen in our homes. I mean, it's kind of a personal thing. And of course, local authorities are the level of governance that is closer to the citizens. They are the, the ones that have a more power to make things really change. Of course, the state level, the state and even the European Union level are quite important, but I would, I would suggest that the local authorities are the ones that are going to have the, the central role in this process. Thank you. So we will hear from a municipality, maybe with some millions. Just a second to say that, uh, in my opinion, the two questions are linked because uh, the more you have political ambition, the more you try to use innovation in order to, to make this kind of transition. If I think, for example, when we developed the tramway system, there were some, uh, we used some innovation because uh, we wanted to, uh, to overcome the resistance of people. Often, we, when we think about energy projects, often there is a lot of resistance. Uh, for example, if you talk about the waste management plan, for example, there are uh, a lot of resistances and uh, innovation may, may help uh, overcome these kind of resistances. But it's important that uh, the overall strategy is high in the political agenda. Ladies, gentlemen, I would like to hopefully uh, thank the member of the panel. They have been fantastic and uh, I took an enormous pleasure uh, into understanding better what they do and why. Uh, so I would like to ask you, as I will do, to applaud them. And we will try to have a lunch. Unfortunately, it won't be the same quality level than yesterday, but uh, life is life. We cannot have banquet uh, every morning. Uh, Patricia. I do not overestimate, I'm, I agree with you. Uh, Patricia, where is the lunch to be served? Okay, we have a guide. Do, do you close the door? Okay, so you can let your enemies and your wallet in the room, it will be locked. Can I just say that I have some copies of the energy plan if somebody is interested. <laughs>